never really heard of the desktop, especially in the early days, or even even maybe a decade ago. It was like Linux is a server, right? It's a it's something that's customizable. It's something that needs to be customizable. I customize all of my Linux servers, even down to the hard hardware schedule. Like I'll I'll modify sys block whatever scheduler from like CFQ to no op and then I'll modify the kernel parameters to match. Does anyone else do that? Just to overclock your storage, you know. So I you know I'm a tweaker. I like to customize my servers. And Linux has always been a server to me. In fact, students have probably heard me say at one point uh, for the last 20 years, Linux is a server. If you want a desktop, use Windows or Mac OS. All right, and that's been my opinion. So Linux on the desktop, well, you know, that's pretty much today's opinion, you know. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people still have that in the back of their head. They don't take it seriously. Like Linux is a desktop, you know. And if you have it as a desktop, it's not a real desktop. It's what we're using as open source people, and that's great. And that's got some limitations, and I'll tell you where I'm coming from that way in a few minutes. Um, of course, I use Linux as a desktop uh, ever since. I used Linux. I mean, who didn't, right? I used to run it as servers, but who didn't install X and some, you know, like early version of GNOME or KDE or, uh, you know, Tab Window Manager or something like that, right? XFCE in the early days when it stood for X forms. Um, and it was great. And my, uh, my reason for doing it was not to use it as my daily driver, as a daily desktop. The reason I installed uh, a workstation, a desktop Linux, was to tinker because it was fun. Uh, we had lots of fun doing it. My go-to, of course, was Jed2. Love that slogan, Linux for Advanced Users. Um, anyone here like Jed2? I used it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was of the opinion that, hey, if you want to install Linux, it should take five days. <laughs> In fact, I used to install it on all sorts of old Sun stuff or SGI stuff, anything I could find that was old. It would run Linux, and it was like nailing jello to a tree. Um, it was great. In fact, uh, it's, it was so commonly done by people to install a Linux desktop with X running, that was the hardest part, um, properly, um, on some old Sun or SGI machine that, that Lucy Snyder even wrote a book about it called you know, Installing Linux on a Dead Badger. And it is the funniest story, short story you'll ever read because she is, even without saying it, talking about Sun machines. Of which I still have some up here. Um, <laughs> so that was pretty much, um, you know, what I did in the late 90s, early 2000s when it came to running Linux as a desktop, not as a server. Server is great. I mean, install it on whatever the heck you want. I mean, I would configure it to the max. No X, right? Like, who needs X on a server, right? Um, but as a desktop, no, not really. Uh, by the way, there is a word for this uh, for people who install Gen 2 Linux that was created as a result of this. So you can find it on. Google dictionary. Uh, yeah, and I love how Google does this, right? You know, like in general use. I guess Arch is the new Gen 2, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what kind of masochist would you call Gen 2 Arch Linux? Well, I used to. Uh, if you go to the, to the Reddit uh, Unix porn channel where they have all the desktops, most of them are Arch, right? But uh, you can tell those people have a lot of time on them. Now this is what changed. So um, in the mid 2000s, Linux really kind of grew up on the desktop. I think in many ways things got very very powerful very very quickly. And I used Linux desktops. I used Fedora. I still love Fedora. I think it's one of my favorite, probably my favorite Linux distribution from a historical standpoint. Um, I use more Ubuntu today, obviously, as we'll see in a few minutes. I still use, you know, I I used Windows and of course Mac OS too. Right? It was Unix. It was the next step Unix. And, like Linux, and you could do lots of things with it. Apple is destroying the operating system right now, but it was really good back then. Um, and so I used four OSs. Four OSs as a desktop for almost a decade. Yeah, there's a problem with that, okay? You don't need four OSs, right? Um, but that's just the way things work. And then something crazy happened. Uh, I found myself doing this kind of stuff in the mid. 2000s, and uh, what happened at that time, cloud development really became the forefront, became the new coolest thing, and even though I, I teach during the day, I do a lot of work outside of teaching, and that's something very important for any educator in computer science. And, um, this is what I 
pretty much dedicated my life to since the mid-2000s, and it was a great learning curve, still a great ride, I still love this stuff. I spent most of last year with IBM Cloud Private and now more with OpenShift. I do a lot of cloud development. Um, I do a lot of what we call like DevOps or site reliability engineer stuff, I guess you could call it now, uh, where you're leveraging different clouds. That's the new best thing. And I love it. It's great. Problem is, is that's my tinkering today. What was it, 20 years ago? It was installing Gen 2 on a dead badger, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't have patience anymore, I find. Maybe it's age, uh, but I have this to think about. This is what I need to think about. And I don't need to think about uh, my operating systems, okay? So mid-2000s, I'm still using four operating systems. The same four, right? The same four that were on the previous slide, but this one is first and foremost. Uh, who here does anything to do with cloud? So you, you know, I don't need to tell you that, you know, there's only so many times you can Google something cloudy and when the instructions are, this is how you do it on Ubuntu, you realize you gotta use Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah, so you gotta be, you gotta use Ubuntu. And so I kind of hitched my beloved Fedora and used more Ubuntu, it's just the way things are. Uh, I ran it in virtual machines without a GUI when I could. Um, for my development, tried to make similar environments to what I had in the cloud. Didn't quite work because you have to really, when you're running um, your dev environments and you're pushing to a virtual machine, running Ubuntu, there's lots of little things that waste your time, for lack of a better word. And so what I find is um, that you really need to, and people have told me this for years and I just recently did this, you have to develop on Ubuntu. So there's a good use for a Linux workstation, right? You have to make Linux your main workstation if you're a cloud developer. It's just as simple as that. I mean, you can't really use Mac OS or Windows and push the VMs. It's so much more fast and elegant if you just adopt Ubuntu, and that's really what I want it, like Google and places I work with, with Velocity and stuff like that, that, that need to um, get stuff done. They just develop on Linux. And that's a very commonplace thing today. I mean, if you're a cloud developer, you're running Linux. It's the operating system, end of story. Um, but this is messy. I've got this stuff on the right-hand side that I need to deal with. I've got four operating systems still. So I need, I need to reduce the complexity. I can't reduce the right-hand complexity yet. Hopefully that comes in the future. Um, but I can reduce the left-hand complexity. So. You guys know I still have to use Windows for, for certain things. And I still do a lot of Windows development as well. Um, but I was able to get rid of pretty much everything and go to this, Populous. And I'll tell you why, okay? And it's the reason why is the most important part, okay? I'm not a big fan of looking at different Linux distros. Hey, have you checked this little Linux distro? That's distro hopping, right? I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I need a bunch of, okay? I still have to use Windows. Um, Windows 10 is a brilliant OS. I'll give Microsoft credit where credit's due. But, um, and uh, server as well, but Top OS is um, what I typically use in most of my machines. So my setup, if you guys know, um, I have a ThinkPad P52S that I dual boot with Windows 10 and Top OS. Um, and I use that most of my time. And then my desktop at home is a Mac Pro tube uh, with 128 gigs of RAM. <laughs> I use it all, trust me. Um, and uh, that is, that used to run Mac OS and a lot of virtual machines with Ubuntu. Now it just runs Pop OS, no Mac OS, gone. And it's way better that way, in my opinion. So I've kind of eliminated the complexity. I run Pop OS for most things and a bit of Windows for what I need to do on that side. And I'm much more productive. Okay, so why, why is that? Um, why am I using Linux as a desktop, as a daily driver on both my desktop machine at home and my laptop most of the day? Like I never thought that would happen 20 years ago, right? I mean, <laughs> playing with Gen 2 on old Sun machines with X was you know, like just for fun. It wasn't for seriousness. I think Linux was a server, right? It wasn't a desktop. Windows or Mac OS was your desktop. So how did I get from there to now? Well. This is what I want. Here's the problem 
with um, the way the Linux community has thought of desktops. And you realize this as you use multiple operating systems. I had the good fortune to use four operating systems, Fedora, Ubuntu, Windows, and Mac OS, for a decade and a half. And um, one thing you realize is that Windows is a brilliant OS for productivity. Uh, Mac OS is great if you're a novice user. Um, it can be very cumbersome if you're a power user. I always used to think, you know, like Mac OS desktop when I saw some pros working, like with graphics. It's always messy, like a messy desk. Well, it's not that. It's actually the operating system. It, Apple designed it to be easy for the most novice users, not efficient for power users. So it looks like a cluttered desk if you try to do anything power user style. It's just from the OS. I'm faster on Windows 10. Uh, because Microsoft treats you like an admin, Linux treats you like an admin, but Mac treats you like a user. That's just their design philosophy. They have a user experience team, UX team, that studies the human-computer interaction, and that's what Linux was missing. Right? They have human interface guidelines at Apple. They have fluent design guidelines at Microsoft. They have people, full-time job. Um, my ex-girlfriend in high school works for Nokia, now, well, technically Microsoft in Ottawa, as a UX designer, and it's all she does all day, right? And she still this is boring. But the, the thing is, is Linux needs that. So what I want is I want something that I can't worry about. I have too much other stuff to worry about. I have to worry about cloud development. I have to worry about this DevOps stuff, this site reliability engineer stuff, making things work across three different clouds. Four, actually. <sighs> the fourth one's a real pain to buy. And I don't have time to worry about my operating system. I don't want to customize Linux. I want Linux to work. So I need something that one does exactly what I want. I don't want to feel like customizing. I don't want to add the NVIDIA drivers. I use NVIDIA stuff, okay? But I hate adding drivers, right? I don't want to do anything like that. I just want to install it, go, get my software, boom, I'm done, right? Um, and I want all the little tiny things that make me more productive on Windows and the stuff, the simplifications that Apple has put in that, that you know, make me smile as well, because there's some things that Apple does that I really like in their UI. Thank you to their UX designers. Thank you to Microsoft's UX designers, right? Linux doesn't have a team that sat down and did that, right? I mean, you've got Linux Mint, you've got Elementary OS. What do they do? They just slap something that makes it look a little different and say, hey, look, it's another distro. Yeah, but where's the UX stuff? So there's one company that did do this. And the reason I heard about them is because I was at a tour at the Google building, and I noticed that a lot of the people had System76 laptops. Anyone here work for Google? Nobody? Really? They need to come down to this unit group. <laughs> There's a lot of them. System76 laptops in that building. And a friend of mine, who's worked there for two years, um, said, yeah, this is what we use to do our development here. And it's Pop OS. And it's, you know, this is just clean and gets the job done. And um, I said, why? He said, they have a UX team. They partnered with universities down there, and they said, you know what? Let's grab a bunch of power users and say, what do you want? What do you do? What will make you more productive as a cloud developer, as a power user, as a creative professional, as a gamer, whatever you are, right? And they studied them with, for free, kind of, with the university. And what they did is they said, well, you want Ubuntu, obviously. Yeah, I need Ubuntu. It's got to be Ubuntu, right? That's all Pop! OS is. It's Ubuntu. But with finesse, the stuff that I want, yeah, the stuff that I want from Windows, the, little th the, the magic of Pop! OS is in the little things, the stuff you don't have to worry about, that you appreciate. They make you smell a lot more than, hey, it's got this feature that I can install in, you know, four commands, three reboots, and three Googling, and wasting an hour and a half. I want it done. I need to work with Kubernetes and OpenShift, okay? I don't have time for this under the hood stuff anymore, right? I love to do it in the past, but I don't have time for that. So that's what I like about Pop! OS. I, I have a larger workload than I've ever had before outside of my day job, and um, this is why I've used Pop! OS. It's not just a different Linux execution. It is just Ubuntu. That's all it is. It's Ubuntu, but this is what System76 did. They have a UX team, user experience team. They studied them properly, not themselves. They studied them with some prof who teaches UX user experience. 
Um, and they made some cool, interesting decisions, like get rid of the three buttons on every window, because you can use key combination. Who's the developer here? Prime Fortner key combination. Very important. Live your life on them. Power users, key combinations. You want to be the fastest you possibly can. You know, little things that I appreciate. I don't even want to change the theme. I haven't changed the theme on my, my desktops. I haven't customized a single darn thing. That's what I want, right? Something really, really easy. So that's what Pop! OS has done for me. And to be honest with you, um, I'm actually more productive. I've been using it for two and a half months now, hardcore. And um, I am far faster at getting the same work that I used to get done in Pop! OS than I was, than I even am at Windows. Right? And Windows is actually designed for productivity down to a UX level that people don't appreciate until you actually sit back and think about it, right? And far more than Mac OS as well, right? That was a big frustration for me for a while. Um, so here's the thing, guys. Um, what is it about? Well, we're going to install it. Uh, the best way to experience Pop! OS is to actually experience it from beginning to end and see what it's all about. It's just the finesse. It's the finesse on Ubuntu. If you like Ubuntu and you want finesse, that's called Pop! OS. Um, you're paying, you're not paying. <laughs> you're getting the UX team from System76. Uh, in my opinion, all Linux distributions should be doing the exact same thing. They should have a user experience team, Fedora included, right? And that way the desktop is just like what we talked about. When we think of Android and where it's kind of common, you know, it's really advanced now. Well, what is that? That's all UX. It's all user experience design, right? Just getting better at it, but in a weird form factor, right? Um, thing that's really cool is you have, there's two items on the website. One for, you know, if you have AMD or just in, the integrated Intel drivers, versus one that comes with the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, because I don't like Nouveau. Anyone here like Nouveau? Nouveau? You know? It sucks. It just sucks. I hate Nouveau. Okay. It doesn't work. It depends on what you're, what software you like it? Well, for your application, yes, it sucks. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, we got one you're, you're for Nouveau. It's, it's functional. So there we go. Post on Reddit, you're probably the only person who likes Nouveau. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of Nouveau myself. I like the, I like the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Um, so, it's got it. Great. Um, I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to worry about little things. If they didn't have the feature, they added it themselves and put the code on GitHub. Right? Like the do not disturb feature and stuff. I don't want these notifications. I'm working, okay? Um, and they made it minimalistic. So you got a blank slate you can start with, and you just add software. And everything just works. Everything just works. I haven't seen anything that just doesn't work. It's a bunch of but finesse. Um, the way they massage the graphical user interface is quite elegant. It's beautiful. I like it more than Mac OS. I like it more than Windows. It's actually worthy of the title, the best OS in the world, in my opinion, right? So that's, that's where the big deal is with System76. And if you look online, people are giving this thing massive praise. Um, you just Google best OS for developers, Pop! OS comes up. People have quoted that lots. I can, I can understand why they say that. But you have to actually use it. Um, the keyboard shortcuts are actually really, really well designed. They're beautiful. You can try them out. I've printed them off here. Um, and um, I've got, if you want to just see the basic differences, nothing major. I mean, there's some little things that you might care about, like they don't use, uh, if you've got UVFI in the first presentation, you don't need Grub. It's uh, System Deboot that they use. Um, whatever. Does it matter to me? No. I just feel that. Boots. Right? Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, things like that, right? For developers, it's great. Stick it on there, go to work, right? I don't have to buy System76 hardware to run it. It's just, just be budget, right? With finesse. Um, don't have to configure LUTs or anything like that. Um, the great thing is, is you shouldn't try this on a virtual machine as a result. If you try it on a virtual machine, you're not going to see any of the finesse. Why? Because all the finesse is in the elegant stuff, running the native data graphics hardware using keyboard shortcuts that you can't translate unless you want to spend a lot of time in your hypervisor, right? So don't run the virtual machine, just dual boot it. Try it out. You can shrink your partition, and dual boot something, no problem. Pop OS makes it ridiculously easy from start to finish. And if you're a power user like me, you'll appreciate it more than anyone else. This is not a Linux finesse that was designed for making Linux easier for Windows users or Mac users or people who don't know what Linux is, which was the typical focus in the past with things like elementary OS and Linux Mint. This is something for power users, people who already know Linux, who just don't want to 
spend time customizing it right now. You can. It's the same thing. I mean, uh, even, uh, ironically, <laughs> last week I did get a firmware update <laughs> for my Lenovo ThinkPad. <laughs> it was the middle of last week, too, like, so it wasn't that long ago. Uh, you know, it's just a bunch of, right? You can do all the same stuff you did under the hood, whatever you want, right? But you don't have to. And it works beautifully. So I've got uh, my old beater laptop as an Alienware. Um, it's not useful for development anymore. It's only got 30 gigs of RAM. So we're going to install uh, Pop West on there. And um, you guys can try it out in a few minutes. I thought that would be a, an exciting end to this. You know, see it from beginning to end. To install. It only takes a few seconds. Well, a few minutes to um, trying it out, and uh, we'll kind of crowd around it like a heart attack victim, and uh, see what the big deal is about, right? Maybe we can get an, ex uh, uh, an appreciation for what Pop! OS actually is, and what they're trying to do, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of what uh, I wanted to kind of share today, because I know the presentation was on Linux Mint. I'm not a big fan of it, but a uh, nice beginner-friendly kind of replacement presentation would be Pop! OS, and I use it professionally. Uh, and I love it. I don't care. I think the name is terrible. <laughs> the heck, Pop OS. Why couldn't they just call it UX for Ubuntu? Work, work Perfect. It. What's that? Or it pops out. What's that? It pops out at you. What's that? It pops out. It pops out at you. There we go. Yeah, they got their own theme and stuff. Um, if you ever go to their website, guys, like uh, System76, so I'll open up Chrome. So. I mean, they sell machines and everything like that, but if you just go over here to Pop, you know, there we go. This is their Pop OS. It's great. You can down, when you go to down, so imagine the future of automation, development as a first class citizen. They're just telling you their, their dream. And people think, oh, that's overrated. It's just another Linux distribution. It's not. The finesse is real. Okay? It's very, very real. And it's worth trying out in a dual boot situation, guys. Um, everything is made easy and intuitive for power users here, right? I'm not going to go through all the specifics, but if you just go to the download page, you'll see there's an Intel versus NVIDIA download. You download those, you download, uh, you can also down on the install instructions here, you can just download the, uh, you know, this program that they use uh, to create the bootable loader. What is it that they use? Download Pop OS. What do they use? Uh, yeah, there we go, etcher.io. And I just downloaded it. And if you look at my downloads folder right here, oops, that's documents, uh, C drive source, source okay. there we go. There's etcher, so etcher.io, open source imager. And for some reason, it always takes forever to open, no matter what machine you own. It's doing something. It's stealing your personal information, sending it online. <coughs> Three, two, one. Perfect. Look at that, eh? Timed it. No matter what machine you're running on, it always takes a long over. But anyway, you select the image, boom, done. Pop OS. I downloaded both because we have gate to the internet here. And, you know, chose the NVIDIA one because the Alienware has NVIDIA. It's a gaming laptop. And you just select your drive, and boom, you just flash it. Nice and easy. So, I mean, nothing complicated. Everything is actually well thought out and simple. So I do have that. I've already imaged it. Who would like to install it? I need a van of white. Mm -hmm. Okay, Vanilla. Let's uh, install this stuff. Oh, so, come on up here, guys. Field trip. And this has already got Pop OS on it, obviously. Uh, no, because you won't get the same experience. Yeah, yeah. The whole idea behind this guy is not doing the projector. Yeah, come on up here. Trust me. Yes. That's what, that's the whole purpose behind, uh, this is not like another, this isn't just another Linux distribution, guys. This is, uh, this is doing the experience. So let's boot from the, uh, USB storage device. There we go. Boom, it's just booting. You're going to do the rest, by the way, for a man of white. I'll guide you through. Here are the shortcuts for cool things, but, uh, if you guys want to come around and try it out, we'll leave it on. Have some fun with it, right? You don't worry, this is my beater laptop. I don't care what happens to it, so you can do whatever you want with it. I treat them really hard anyway. Out, it is already better because it shows you what's going on while it's booting. So you don't just yes. see a Ubuntu logo saying things. But yes. the Ubuntu things server does that. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe. So you can hit uh, the there we go. Or yeah, yeah. Escape. Is that what? Okay. Yeah.
one but, finger. And third. But yeah, that, that's one of the things I do. U.S. Yeah. English. Uh, yeah, we're, quiet spot. No, no, not Canada. <laughs> no, I will. Well, it's especially bad. But you know, we're in, you, you're a suburb of the U.S. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay, press no, enter, fine. No. <laughs> I, so I like the Oxbridge variant of English. Okay, fine. There we go. Jeez, you're like the only one. Okay. Here's the Cherokee. No, the keyboard. Keyboard. Yes, it's the port. Oh, there you go. Enter. Come yeah. on, enter. Try the other keyboard enter, the main one. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now, what do we want? Yeah, clean and spell. Wipe it all away. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. Oh, all right. Let's see. Oh, you got to click on clean and spell. And then let's go forward. There we go. Yeah, the SSD is the back of the one. Yeah. The reason is stolen. There we Don't go. Encrypt, well, it's a laptop. Should you encrypt it with locks? Probably. Uh, w w what encryption is it? Anchor fast? No, it'd be locks. It's locks. Yeah. Locks, okay. The new locks, right? I didn't work with that. So. We don't do that. You don't want it? Okay, fine. Okay. I use you should on a laptop. I, I use NKFX on my laptop. Okay. So that I can uh, back up a back up go. In, well, you can still do it backwards if you like. Yeah. yeah. So basically, if I install this, this is how it will go, and then I'll just put all the encrypted files on yeah. over there. Yeah, I can encrypt the files that you want, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the cool thing about Pop OS is, uh, see how like they got that, you know, that the progress line at the bottom, they get like a circle there. If you rub the monitor clockwise, it speeds it up. <laughs> Don't rub it the wrong way. Slow it down. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It works only if you put a touch screen. I, 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 <laughs> there is a bug. You, you should have said rub it this way and then rub your stomach at the same time. Right, that's right. You, you laugh, but I had this sort of happen. I had, uh, there's, when I was in university, I had code that would submit my assignments and then I had to retrieve the results. Yeah. And at some point, there's a change to Windows and it would hang until it would interrupt woke the program up. Oh, I'm going okay. to last minute interrupts, move your mouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you could tell the programmers, because they were hearing the faster you scrolled your mouse back and forth over this window, the faster the updates. Wow, geez, <laughs> like, you know, so like 300 yeah. clicks solved the problem. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is, this First is time ever. From all the developers, yeah. they'd submit their homework and they'd be like, <laughs> yeah. you know, for like a minute. <laughs> Practicing for massive events. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to generate random inputs. So yeah, yeah, it was yeah. essentially the same thing. It was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I ran into a similar thing just last week, or rather, someone on IRC I was talking to did. Uh, IPFS daemon that I was tinkering with, he found that his download went faster if you continually pinged the machine. You have the whole. Yeah, it's a live, it's a live distro, guys, and then. And then when this is just installing, mm -hmm. like you can try. Remember at the beginning you yeah. said try it out, or you could just install. We're gonna oh, install I see, it right. Yeah. So it's like Ubuntu, basically. Yeah, yeah. And Ubuntu is. Yeah, you notice at the very like I didn't show it to you, but at the very beginning, um, you saw it was actually loading the NVIDIA proprietary drivers even during the install. Oh, that's interesting. And they will fail if you don't have uh, an NVIDIA card. You'll see the big red blocks. So you'll know you have the. Yeah, I, I did that. Yeah, <laughs> I found it out by mistake when I was. Going to do it on that machine. That's good. Um, Better than getting through the whole install and then booting up and being like, why is it slow? <laughs> yeah, well, it'll just yeah. it'll use the integrated stuff if you yeah. got it right. But yeah, that's kind of neat. Look at that. Tells you what it's doing. This, remember, this is for power users, right? So it's not just going to make it simple, it's going to make it simple and powerful. Right? It's great. Like, if you're a power user, this thing is really it's sexy, probably right? probably the same one from the console. Yeah, kind of. It shows yeah. you something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and also very responsive, like they, they polished a lot of the UI a lot, they've made it simpler. Um, some people don't like the GNOME 3 and other stuff and because of, well, whatever, okay, uh, I, I stopped listening to the rants, this. but I like something that, I appreciate something that is simple and fast, that runs my apps fast, that's all it is, right? Um, okay. There we go, is it done? Yeah. Yeah. But it's Alienware, it's, uh, it's uh, fast pros. So, yeah. No, this is old, it's ancient. Yeah. Did you say that it had, quote, only 32 gig for them? Oh, no, that's my ThinkPad. Uh, yeah. This one has six. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. That's a note, no? <laughs> yeah, only, yeah, only 32. That's, that'd be a lot. Well, if you're doing virtualization, though, that's just a solid state drive. 
Well, yeah, there's an eighty gig SSD and a five hundred gig hard drive in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this is this is ancient. Like this is like obsolete. You know, like there we go. Are you gonna do the English Canada again? That's the English US. That's good. You know, that because the keyboard should be English US. Yeah, but. Well, come on, Louis. Gonna oh my gosh, Russian? you're totally gonna. No. Come on. Okay, add Russian, fine. I don't speak Russian. Oh, hold on. Oh, this is a choice for. Is it adding my keyboard right now, or is it setting a. Choice? The default. Keyboard layout. Yeah. No, no, default shouldn't be Russian. Okay, go back. Go English. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Like, Russian would make it, like, for you. And then. No, I actually don't use. You don't speak Russian? No, I speak Russian, I, but we never use Russian on uh, uh, okay, gotcha. Uh, Cuba Wi-Fi, the password is secret555, five, 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 if you guys want it. Why is it Cuba Wi-Fi? It's called Cuba Wi-Fi because we taught, you guys ever hear in the news where um, the government of Cuba announced that they got like reliable wife, reliable um, internet across the country? That was us. A year ago, they, the government of Cuba, their only ISP, which is communism, it's state run, called the Texa, flew 11 people up to Canada and the president of Fibernetics, Francesco, and myself taught them how to fix all their internet problem. And they went back down to Cuba and implemented it all. That was the two rooms down. We had to feed them for two weeks and give them an Airbnb and drive them everywhere. Yeah, just click on Toronto. Good enough. Doesn't matter. There we go. Okay. And we don't need that. Skip all that. No. Normally, no. Don't put your Facebook account in there. <laughs> oh, so this is a account. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, I don't want your Facebook account. No, I, I okay, we'll call. Now, here's the cool thing about uh, Linux, guys. We're gonna make a user named Bob. Yes. And the great thing about Pop OS is if you spell Bob backwards, it still works even at the login screen. Wow. Okay. But it looks differently in the mirror, though. Uh, <laughs> Secret five five five. There we go. <laughs> And we're good to go. Now, let's use ZLS, guys. This is the finesse we were talking about. Let me just wiggle my mouse so that we can get these projectors back on. To give us the background light. And if we uh, come up here, let's turn the lights on real quick. So the finesse that you see in Pop! OS is it's GNOME, right? Yes. But how spiffy is it? Go up to activities. Yes. There we go. Open up Firefox. There we well, go. Well, it takes time just to open it. Yeah, and let's just go up to, uh, let's open up another one. Let's go open up a file browser. Yeah, now of course you got your Windows key, which is your super key. No, 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 try this. So watch this. Control. Where's my terminal shortcut? See that? Now watch this. How about Control and then the Windows key? And you can tile them, right? And then go over here and you can do the same thing. You could tile that. Um, very easily. You can go to another desktop, you know, open up another app. Uh, you can move them between them. It's all, there's keyboard shortcuts for everything to make you more efficient. And it's all intuitive. You also notice that if I go back up here to that desktop, um, that there's no close buttons on this. Like there's just an X, right? So there's no the maximum minimize because that's all controlled by this functionality yes, here. See that? I can make full screen, back, forth. Isn't that sweet? Well, if you use the interface, you'll find that this is the slickest thing ever since sliced bread. Okay. Uh, can I ask you a question? So uh, sure. when you switch uh, the desktop, right, from one to another, does it switch the other uh, window? You can if you like. You no, know, you don't have to. And you can also, if you hold shift while you're doing it, you can actually move it to another desktop. So you could do this. I just move that up and down to another no, desktop? No, what I mean is like when I have a second screen on my Ubuntu, I switch the desktop and only the main one switches and this one stays the same. Yeah, yeah, you could do that too. That's just a but Windows I, button, I right? want everything to change. One monitor and another one. On my, well, we can do that. On my X Ubuntu H4, I can change it by default. Both change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, it's but you can, just you a can, setting. Yeah, it's just a setting that you can change. You can also, if you don't like the gut, the simplifications that they made, just install the GNOME tools and change it, right? But I've never had to do that. Um, there's lots of really cool little, but minimal. Only the ones that developers actually sat down and said, yes, I would use this, did they ever stick in. That's what's important to remember about Pop! OS. It's user experience design. Hundreds of people have said, who work in development and other professions, power users of Linux, who know Linux inside and out, said, this is what I want in my UI. 
even little shortcuts. Like they, they said, these are the only shortcuts we ever need. Like super key, of course, would be Windows or the uh, option key on a Mac keyboard, right? But uh, how do you open up a terminal? Super key T, right? Super you know, like key. they thought of all the little tiny stuff, even things like this. Like if I don't, you know, like your GNOME notifications, mm -hmm. go up to the top. Yep. Just click on the bar at the top with your calendar and stuff. Oh, now you can download this from GitHub, but see that little do not disturb? You turn that on, it means you got an update, you're not going to see it. You're working. I don't want to see that. Oh, does it have the uh, night, uh, night uh, light reset? No. When, dark mode? Uh, no. Yes, it has no. dark mode. No, no, it's not dark mode. When, it's get, uh, when the sun goes down, it, the colors change. Oh, yeah, that's just an app you add if you want it. Okay. Yeah, no, they don't put too much in there. They only want to put what power user said, this is what I'm going to use. If, if like 40% of them I want that, they're not going to put it in. You can just quickly add it. Where do you add it? It's the pop shop. Yeah, go up to activities. Yeah, go down to the pop shop right here. They put the most useful stuff on there. Pop shop. If you guys remember that from the old days, that was where you actually got to refill your bottles of pop. They still have one in Waterloo, I think, don't they? Pop shop. And there we go, Visual Studio Code or something like that. Lights, uh, lights. There's Redshift. There we go. If we go back, it will show you Redshift. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's easy. Or you could use that. You click on the, the top corner, top right corner. Uh, yes. Because the night mode is built into GNOME. 3.20. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just click on that. Does it do it? No. Uh, well, if you do the most important thing is uh, yeah. a setting, so it does it at some. It's, you, it's also got really cool power options time. that, you know, like even this, like, I'm sure it detected that. I never tried it out, actually. Yeah, it did. There you go. Um, like, just things work, right? Because it's Ubuntu. Remember, it's just Ubuntu. That's all it is but with the finesse. And if, it, if it's something that you'd have to do something extra to do, and you don't want to, they've done it for you, right? So uh, what it is, is a really cool finesse added to Ubuntu. It's not a distribution. It's just finesse for Ubuntu. So Pop! OS is just Ubuntu made for me. <laughs> or you, if you like it, right? And that's what it's all about. And you, if you read the website now, then you'll get it. But most people go, oh, that's just overhype. You know, it's, it's another Linux Mint or whatever, right? It isn't. It's UX. User experience. Built so into Linux for the first time ever. Was that their own installer or was that... Uh, yeah, they made their own. Okay. No, I just, well, they, they made like part, part of rethemed, you know, it's whatever. If they, if they, they designed it UX first, and then they reuse components, and if something didn't meet their needs, then they have to make it, yeah. right? Um, so they got a lot of stuff on there. If you go to the System76, you know, GitHub page, they got all their extra things they've had to do there. You can use for anything. Mm -hmm. my, and you'll my, see what they've kind of done. And they tell you, this is why we did it, because these people said this is important. Yeah, right? and I bet you can um, Twix. Twix. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. If you are going to do this, if you're going to sell this on a Mac, though, like I have mine running on a Mac Pro Tube, and um, uh, it pop away, funny enough, Ubuntu 18 did not install properly on my Mac Pro. I had to change the boot option, like, what was it, no mode line or something like that, uh, and then it booted. Pop! OS thought of that. No mode set? No mode set, there we go. Pop! OS thought about that. There, and it's the same version, 1810, right? So, so that little tiny stuff that you see, it's, there's someone behind the scenes actively thinking about that, right? Um, you can't do it on a newer Mac, though, like, uh, a newer Max because they kind of Apple held the storage hostage with their T2 chip. They will let you with boot camp run Windows only, but they will not let you boot Linux from the native storage. You can boot it from an external drive. So you've got to go to an older Mac, I think, like 2015, earlier than 2015. So if you've got one of those, which are kind of really good laptops or desktops, then I would seriously consider replacing it if you do cloud development like I did. I think anything um, free touch bar. Yeah. Free touch bar, I think, yeah. Yeah, something free touch bar. Maybe even, even a bit before that. Hard to say. If you Google it, you'll find out. Um, I don't like Apple stuff now. I think their keyboard is the crappiest one since the 80s. I mean, like unacceptably low key travel. Someone used the term. Uh, I can't remember on the 
but I agree, like, I, I don't like their stuff. And if it's not open, if I can't install Linux on it, I can't extend a lifespan, if I can't install RAM or storage. I like to get a lot of time out of a machine. I don't know, it's good for the environment, good for me, anyway. How long has Pop OS been around? I don't know. Couple years now. But uh, is it a couple years? Well, yeah. it's a, um, but when, whenever they did that UX, that user experience design, because I think they just shipped with the Bungie for when they started, right? Because System 76 yeah. has been around for a while. But whoever, when they did that UX stuff, right away, that's when you saw the flood of comments. And I remember that being like uh, 2017, 2018, is when I saw those comments where people saying, This is what I want. This is what you should use as a developer, right? And it's really it's pretty sweet, guys. So if you guys want more, try it out. Have fun. This is the finesse I was talking about. Do a boot your machine at home with it. You might say, this sucks. Or you might say, yeah, this is just Ubuntu with finesse. And if that's what you come up with after today's presentation, well, then you understand what Pop OS is about and why that's important, why that's actually important. My current execution is called Ubuntu. It's called Ubuntu. Oh, okay. Because I was doing it on Zephyr. So you have to do the live TV as well. I love Zephyr. People just grab it all. Yeah, it was like the... It, 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 for everything. Yeah, it, it took a bit of work, but it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I assume that this would not screw up the paper. Oh, yeah, I think about it. Well, it's UFI, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same as the Yeah, notice there's no fancy lock in there where you're So I assume it being be somewhere in the now. Yeah, it's weird. You know, like, that's why it's like a lot of It's only budget. You know, and. So if it was if it was something other than it was like based on art. Yeah. If I was to follow the emoji guy, oh, it's great. Um, like actually, uh, uh, oh, it's incredible. The, uh, it's it's supports well. It's got um, of course the Ubuntu drivers for the new Apple trackpad. Um, but who do I know who has it running on a 2013 MacBook Pro? And it's incredible. Yeah, but. Um, yeah. No, uh, Amy, she has it running on 2013 MacBook Pro. Um, and that trackpad, that's one of the ones with the disk drive stuff. Yeah, no more. But um, well, today, you go to the new ones that don't have the light up logo yeah, on using that for you. Yeah. That's where they lock everything down. Like, I, I was just saying, yeah. should we call it a video? I'll buy it every day. Yes, it's a valid Have fun, guys. Um, also